Hello and welcome. My name is Tyrion Lannister. Folks, I'm really excited because we finally have gotten to the UC season. Now, I don't want to make this video just about predictions. The thing I really want to focus on is actually the new charm system, but as a bonus, I'll quickly throw in my predictions as well. So first of all, rankings of who's doing well with the charm system, and it is also where you can see the charm star reward. Namely, that the top charm, the person with the most charm, is going to receive the conquest totem, uh, new permanent voucher. Uh, this is a, a you know pretty big, basically S. Uh, S quality uh, exterior, definitely really, or sorry, SS quality, um, really valuable, and getting a permanent voucher is huge. Um, there's also a 30 day and a 14 day voucher for second and third place. Now, how exactly does the charm system work? Well, there's a lot that is still not known. But what, one thing I will mention to people is that actually if you go to your benefits tab and you scroll all the way down to the beautiful new world, well, you've been noticing that every day you claim this and you get some daily uh, things, probably most noteworthy on Fridays, you get the 30 black diamond coupon. Well, there's also something if you scroll to the right. As you can see, there's a flower, and it's labeled as an Alliance Conquest item, and it states that gifted players will receive 10 charm, gifting 200 plus will tri trigger a message, and so will 300 plus. My guess, and again, I don't know, but my guess would be that when you go into spectator mode, you will be able to basically spend or gift these flowers that you've accumulated in the form of giving charm. Um, again, I don't, I don't know how exactly that's going to work. Whether you give it to an, you know, one player at one at a time, if you kind of do it to multiple players, we will definitely see. But that is my basic understanding of how the charm system works. Um, and again, if you just scroll to the right here, you can see how many flowers you actually have at this point. Now, as promised, I also am going to quickly, very briefly, go through my predictions. Um, again, I, I understand that you know some people have already done them, but I just wanted to kind of go through for everyone um, what my thoughts are and and the predictions that I made. So, at the outset, um, surprising very few people, I do think DEP um, is going to end up. Uh, winning at all again this season. They just have a lot more power than any of the other alliances. They've gotten pretty good at winning UC now. They've won the last few in a row. Um, but beyond that, I think that uh, there's a bit more of an interesting discussion when it comes to second place. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm hedging my bets here. I'm in WXC, and I really believe in us. I think that we are probably the best competition that BDR has for second place. Now, I have taken BDR to get second, but I truly think it is a toss-up. And like I said, I'm kind of hedging my bets here. I think that if we end up winning, then great, I'll get more rewards for winning, and that's great. And if not, then my prediction's right, at least. So it's kind of a way for me to, no matter what happens, then I'm either right or I'm getting more rewards. Um, I think that for all of you, it, it is really a toss-up. I think BDR has definitely more experience but we definitely have some strong accounts in WXC. We've got a lot of new people that have just joined recently, and we've saved up a ton of speed ups, and we are ready to burn them. So I think it's going to be a very interesting match when we face them in this round four matchup. I'm not going to go through all the other matchups just because I don't think that um, I don't want to spend too much time going through them, but just to go through a few ones that are kind of maybe interesting or close. Um, I do think NBE is going to beat KAC. Um, I just think NBE is a stronger alliance. They have more power, um, but that is a bit of an upset in that first round, um, so I wanted to call attention to that. Um, I just think in general, I think HOH, they recently beat um, NBE, I believe, um, in one of their most recent rounds. It's it, And so I, I do think that they're going to be able to do it again here. Um, but that's definitely going to be a very close one. Uh, I think N3O has just gotten a little bit weaker lately. I don't, I don't really think that they're going to be able to do much of anything against BDR. I think that should be a pretty solid win for BDR. 
Um, other kind of close matches that I foresee, uh, I think the KAC NW1 is going to be much closer than against uh, NBE. I do think NW1 will edge it out, but I think that's a close one. I think KAC could definitely win this, and I, it really is anyone's match. Um, NFI and WTF uh, definitely going to be a kind of tough draw for NFI because I think that uh, I think what uh, WTF or RIS is is one of the stronger alliances to get eliminated early. So I, I want to note that you know that's that's just a tough draw. I think NFI has probably got the worst draw you could get getting BDR in the first round and then WTF in the second. But I do think that um, that's where they're probably going to go down. Um, RRH I think is probably going to beat BTA um, in this last round that it's kind of an interesting one. I think GCM is going to edge them out. The first round, I think that they should be able to beat BTA. Um, but then, I, like I said, I think the GCM is a little bit stronger, a little more polished on UC, but it, it could go either way. I could definitely see RRH taking one of those two. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think that most of the rest of these are pretty expected. FDH has been kind of weirdly depleted, and I, I will be honest that I don't know exactly what's going on with their alliance, but I think that they've restocked a lot of their power um, for UC, and I expect them to have pretty much no trouble getting back to to at least round four. But, I again, I think NBE is one of those uh, relatively lesser... Uh, I think that they're probably a top five alliance in this. Um, it's very close between them and HOH, but I think that they are probably not um, seen as that, and their their ranking at 13th is, is very deceptive. I think that they're much, much stronger than that for sure. Um, but like I said, I think HOH has beaten them before. I think they'll do it again. Um, other than that, I think that the only other interesting matches are really going to be when, when we face BDR a few times, um, and then obviously uh, you know, that final match will be interesting, whether it's us or, or BDR facing off against DEP. Definitely will be some good matches there. Um, like I said, I think a few of these matches back here might have been wrong. I've done really well the last few times, so I'm kind of hoping that I can pull it off again. But I will be honest that this has been a much harder one to predict, just because there's a lot of uncertainty around a lot of alliances like FDH and N3O. It's just a lot of the usual suspects are definitely weaker than they have been in the past. But... Time will tell, and I hope that these predictions do pretty well, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed looking at them, and, and hopefully it's helped with your own. Um, anyway, lots of fun stuff coming with UC. Really just excited for it all. Um, definitely intrigued by this new charm system, and just in general excited for the whole thing to get going. But until next time, my name is Tyrion Lannister, and I'll see you then.